Hi, I'm Mama Denim, and welcome to my channel. Halloween is just around the corner, and if you're a drag queen, Halloween's always around the corner. And today, we're gonna learn how to make this. And guess what? It only costs $30 to make. You're gonna need some jumbo braid. About six packs will do for this lovely thing. Be sure to get Kanekalon or Afrail by Kanekalon. Do not use Bobby Braid, I repeat. Do not use Bobby Braid for this, it's no good. You're also gonna need a wig head, preferably a canvas one like this, and a mount. Parchment paper. One of these lovely wig caps. A wire wig brush and a teasing comb. Hot glue and a glue gun. Some three inch pearl pins. I got these from Bobby Pins because I don't know where else you get them. Some bamboo skewers to skewer, of course. First, we're gonna align our wig cap. I'm using a makeup crayon to mark the center of my forehead as well as the top center of my head. This will help you point your styling in the right direction, especially if you're doing a tall updo. Otherwise, you might look like a unicorn. Next, I'm drawing where I want my hairline on the lace. And last, I'm drawing horizontal lines on the sides for a little more alignment. Now we're going to prep our hair. For the base layer of the wig that hits the shoulders, I'm cutting the hair into thirds, then separating each clump into four sections. For the majority of the rest of the wig, I'm cutting it into halves and separating them in the same way. Cut the end off of a section so that the hairs are fairly even. Put glue on top and also pump some glue into the clump as well. Rub the tip along the edges as well to make sure it's all contained. Also hold the tip of the glue gun inside the clump without adding any more glue and it will actually help melt the fibers together. Fan your sections out evenly, about an inch and a half to two inch sections. After that, dunk the tip in ice water and it'll seal the glue so you can set it aside immediately. Once you finish gluing and they're dry, thoroughly comb out each section. This will make styling easier and your wig won't be shedding constantly. So here's two packs of hair laid out at half length. This is what the meat of the wig will be after the first layer. This is where the advantage of making this kind of wig comes into play. So I'm going to mix the two different colors together. I'm going to make sections of 50% one color, 50% another, 75 one, 25 another, and some that just have a whisper of one another in there. When you go to glue these sections together, just shuffle the hairs around in your hand and make them nice and blendy, and then repeat the same gluing process as you did on the other layers. So here's our first three packs of hair, there's our base layer on the left, and then our two packs on the right that are all blended together. So this is a good place to start, and now we can start putting it on our wig, and this should cover about half of it. Before we put on our wig cap, we're going to cover the wig block in parchment paper. Hot glue actually doesn't stick to parchment paper, so by doing this, all the glue that seeps through the wig cap won't stick to the wig block or anything else, and you'll have a better finish on it. I know this looks really sloppy, but just do whatever you need to do to get the wig cap over the paper without it sliding around everywhere. Now we put on the cap. I'm making sure to line up the line I drew down the center of my forehead with the center seam of the wig block, and that the horizontal lines on the sides are going in the right direction. I pin it with two to three pins in the front on the lace, and then I stretch the back of the cap down and pin below the adjuster strap on the cap. And now glue! I'm applying a little glue to the ends of my sections and then just sticking them straight on. Make sure you start far enough above the strap so you can still adjust it later. Go all the way around the head, but leave about an inch of space empty when you get to the hairline. I haven't mastered the boil perm yet or some other way to mass curl the hair, so we're going to hand curl all the sections. I find it easier to curl as I build the wig, so we're going to do that now. When curling synthetic hair, it's usually recommended to style on the lowest setting, but this hair's a little cheaper quality and it acts a little different. So on my curling iron, it goes up to 25 and I did it on 13. 
The less hair you use, the better the curl will turn out. So ideally, you want to try and do two to three sets of curls per section of hair. So you'll curl it for about 10 seconds or till it's hot to touch and that's about the amount of heat that it needs. These also need to cool before you drop or they won't hold. So put a pearl pin above the section and gently remove the coil onto it until it's cool. Once your whole row is curled and released, you can build the next row. For the second row of hair, I used half lengths and cut off a couple inches. All the rows above this are half length and all the rows are spaced out about one to two inches apart. And when I say they're spaced about one to two inches apart, this will determine how dense your wig is gonna be. So here's what it looks like so far. Now that we've got a large chunk done, we'll start the hairline. Glue a section close to but not on the drawn hairline and let it dry. Once it's secure, make a small line of glue on the lace just behind the drawn hairline. Take your bamboo skewer and use it to pull the hair flat and tight to the hairline. After you attach the second piece next to it, make another glue line and put the skewer through both pieces to join them and make a continuous hairline. After you complete this hairline, make another layer directly behind the entire thing for coverage. You can skip the skewer part on this one. So for the hairline areas, I flat ironed everything so the hair textured would look smoother, and I actually found it made curling easier, prettier, and actually take less time to curl. Go figure. So I flat ironed the rest of the new hair I added, and everything I'm adding at this point is one third length, including the hairline area. Now it's time to style. For this look, I'm basically making a big curly rat's nest. Pull all the hair up except for the base layer we made. Teasing is kind of hard for me to describe, but you can be as mean as you want to this layer, so just take your time. Take a section of your hair and make circular motions with your teasing comb. So go towards the wig block with your hand and then back towards yourself, going upwards into the air. So make like O's like that. Uh, every so often I twist my hair in one direction and then tease, 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 and then twist back in another direction. It helps me to tangle it more so your teasing won't slip away. After you finish teasing an area, go ahead and hairspray the whole thing, bring down the next layer, and repeat the process. Once you get to the second or third layer, this will be where you'll want the curls to start looking nice and not just a ratted mess. All the ones you did on the bottom, these won't really show and it, it's totally cool that they're ugly. So for these ones, lightly tease the roots so you can get some teasing and fluff there. Pull the whole curl back, find a small section that looks kind of, I don't know, 
by itself in the curl. Stick the teeth of your comb into it, gently push forward, and you should have a nice springy curl. You'll have little tails left off of these, but I just grab a clump of the tails and then tease those tails together and push up. And then that should help secure the curls that you just made, and then I can just rip off the ends and hairspray it together. And that's it! After I filmed this part, I added a couple more pieces to the hairline and a couple more pieces on the top and played with the styling a little bit more, but this is basically the finished product. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Be sure to like and subscribe, and feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. See you next time!